You are 45 times more likely to die by a domestic dog. Your neighbor's dog killing you is probably more likely than a bear. You're 60,000 times more likely to be murdered by a fellow human being than killed by a bear. That means you're safer having a bear live with you than your spouse. And she had to lock herself in the, uh, the bedroom. All of a sudden, Sheriff Smith found himself with a hostage situation where the bear had taken over the house. It was one of the worst things I have ever seen. I came back to the booth and you were bawling. I wasn't bawling, you but I was bawling. tearing You up. had tears rolling down your face. We show some pretty screwed up stuff sometimes on this podcast. I couldn't put the bear stuff on there. Welcome to Socialite Crime Club. What kind of very sad tale are you telling socialites today? You know, there's degrees just how screwed up someone's perspective can be that they think is perfectly normal. Today, we're going to explore just how far that can go. And for some of our listeners, it's going to be more than they can bear. That was a good pun. Okay, let's talk about bear hunting in the United States. I even have a little bear here for uh, you. Hi, Mr. Bear. Are you saying hi right back? Look at that big paw. Yeah. So in the United States, we have brown bears and we have black bears. Now, there's about 350,000 to 450,000 bears in the U.S., so we have a lot of bears. Now, the one thing people can take away from this episode, bears can kick your ass, so be yes. careful with bears. Oh, be bear-wise. Yeah, and your pets, but too, they can kick. Right, and we're going to talk about some issues of bear attacks and do bears pose a threat to humans, which the answer is that they can. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to understand this, so I did some research for this episode. We're going to go all the way back to 1784. Oh, this is a long ways. From 1784 to current, there are 180 fatal bear attacks in North America. These are just obviously what were recorded. Mm -hmm. And I want to break down what bears are really dangerous, because I think it'll help our listeners for this episode. Okay. Polar bears, number one. Yes. Not as the most dangerous, actually. Uh, but some people do die from polar bears. You're going to find this hard to believe. Okay. There are no documented fatal attacks of polar bears in the continental United States in the wild. A oh. polar bear has never killed somebody in the U.S. in the wild. Just when it's been trapped in a zoo. Just when it's trapped in a zoo and there's four of them. Okay. North America, way far Alaska. Remember I said continental U.S. Mm -hmm. Way far north Alaska, but mainly Canada. There's been 11. Since 1784, 11 polar bears have killed oh. people that we know of. That's actually, it seems like a fairly low number for that That's time a very frame. low number. Okay. Black bears, 82 total throughout North America. 66 of them were in the wild. The rest were actually domesticated bear, bears. Okay, and we have a lot bears. of black bears here in Arizona. We do. We're going to talk about Arizona bears here in a minute. Oh. We have one of the most aggressive bears in history in Arizona. But really? Don't jump ahead. Okay. Brown bear. Now, it's important that some people realize brown bear, we're talking grizzly bear. Okay. You know what the difference between brown bear and a grizzly bear and like a Kodiak bear is? Nothing. Not much of anything. Most brown bears, Kodiak bears, are close to the ocean. They eat salmon. A brown bear, more inland, mm -hmm. is considered a grizzly. And it is a subspecies of the brown bear, but it's more of a grizzly bear. Much sure. more aggressive. And there used to be grizzlies in Arizona. There used to be grizzlies in Arizona. We're going to talk about that too. But okay. brown bear, 90 total fatalities, 82 of those in the wild. So not a big difference between black bear and brown bear. And one of them was Mr. DiCaprio. Yes, in the Reverend. I'm so yes. glad that you brought that up. He got his. Yeah. He wasn't fatal though. He lived. Yeah, yeah, he did live, but it was still an attack. He probably wished he died. Uh, in right. the U.S. total though, just the U.S. So now we're going from North America, just the U.S. 85 in the wild, 27 in captivity. Oh, okay. So being killed by a bear is a thing. It's yeah. it's low. It, there it's, are probably more people who get struck by lightning. It's interesting you're saying that. I did some research, oh. according to Dr. Lynn Rogers from the North American Bear Center. That's okay. a thing too. That's interesting. Um, you are 45 times more likely to die by a domestic dog. Your neighbor's dog killing you is probably more likely than yeah. a bear. Yeah, your mom's dog biting me is more likely than you a bear. You still have the scar. I 100%. Still have a scar, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Bees. 120 times more likely to die by bees. Oh my gosh. And you're right. Lightning. You are more likely to get struck by lightning than attacked by a bear. Hmm. I think the most profound stat that I found, you're 60,000 times more likely to be murdered by a fellow human being yeah. than killed by a bear. That means you're safer having a bear live with you than your spouse. Yeah, oh, 100%. Immediate, well, wait, I don't know about living <laughs> with you. 
<laughs> I think that might skew the stat. You, you almost suckered me into that I one. Did. <laughs> but you brought up Arizona Bears. I got into Arizona history, and I want to talk about Arizona because obviously we're from Arizona. We record our podcast in Arizona. Uh-huh. But I think everybody thinks of Arizona as cactuses and deserts. Tumbleweeds. We, tumbleweeds. We have a lot of mountain ranges. We have a lot of bears. I think a lot of people don't even really realize what a roadrunner truly looks like. They think of Looney Tunes. What the hell does that have to do with anything? I think a lot of people don't realize what Arizona wildlife is like and landscape. They know what a roadrunner, everybody saw a roadrunner. Not everybody has seen a real roadrunner. Okay, but all right. We, we digress. Bears. We're, we're, <sighs> we should put a picture up on the screen. The fuck does a roadrunner come from? <laughs> I have to remember shit when I put these slides up. Yeah. And then you're like, well, let's talk about a roadrunner. I had a Red Bull. I had a Red Bull for lunch. I need a minute. I'm about to spew a lot of info. Okay. Keep your roadrunners to yourself. Okay. okay. So Arizona bears, not just cactus and desert. The first recorded bear fatality in Arizona was 1885. Richard Wilson, Sedona, in between Sedona and Flagstaff. Oh, uh-huh. He was hunting grizzly bear, shot one. It ran into the thicket. He ran in after it. He did not come out. Oh. Yeah, the bear ate him. Where did he shoot the bear? Do we know? Uh, apparently not in a place that killed him. Okay. Yeah. So we had an 1885 bear hunter. 1908, Baby Laird. This is actually kind of a sad story. Hmm. The Elysian Grove Pleasure Park. Elysian Grove Pleasure Elysian Park. Elysian Grove. It's in okay. Tucson, Arizona. They had a bear on display there. Apparently they had some type of carts that people could go around on. So this mom and this one-year-old baby are going around on the cart, went by the bear, well, the bear had actually escaped from its cage, but the bear's going down the road there and the cart goes by, bear grabbed the baby. No, when you say they had a bear on display, just a big ball and chain around its neck and it's just hanging I out of the front? it was in a cage because it's 1908, so it was hard to find the article that really described it, but it sounds like it escaped from whatever containment it was in. Mm-hmm. And then it snatched the baby out of this little cart that was driving by and it ate the baby. Oh, he was hungry. <laughs> it was terrible. Okay, this is terrible. 1953... Andrew Palmer, he was three. Hmm. He was in Flagstaff. His parents, they owned a pet bear. Oh. It didn't go well. Did they have the pet bear before the baby came along? Yeah, and I think the pet bear was jealous, so the pet bear drug the small child into its enclosure and ate it. Hmm. I was here before you. Keep your kids away from bears. Uh, 1966, crazy similarity here. Phyllis Trimper, also three years old. Prescott, family's pet bear ate her. Oh my god! You know there's issues when the incident goes down at the Ponderosa trailer park. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't well, mean to make light of this because a three-year-old did die, but at the same time, it's hard to read a news article where the family's pet bear at the Ponderosa trailer park ate the three-year-old daughter. Well, where do you keep a bear in a trailer park? Outside the trailer, I guess. So <sighs> the moral of the story here between those last three, keep your kids away from bears. 2011. And get a bear after your kid comes. Maybe just don't get a bear. 2011, Lana. This is Pine Top, Arizona, up in the mountains, up in the White Mountains. She lives on a golf course. She is walking her dog. They encounter a bear. The dog goes crazy. There is a common theme that I'm finding around the country. Keep your dogs away from bears. And if your Mm -hmm. dog decides to go after a bear, do not interfere. Lana did. Oh, dear. She got bit by the bear. She didn't kill her, but the Mm -hmm. bear had an infection that she got the infection after like a year or something like that. And okay. a couple of surgeries, she ended up having a terrible brain like, hemorrhage. Like a that bacterial infection? Yeah. So she died as a result of these bites from the bear. I'm assuming this was a black bear because... All of these are black bears except for the first one. Okay. 2023. Now this one is a little scary. Stephen Jackson. He's from Tucson, Arizona. He buys a piece of property up in the woods just outside of Prescott, Arizona. Okay. In the Groom Creek area. He's building his house. He's got a little camp trailer set up that he goes up there while he's building his house. One morning, he's sitting on a little picnic table, having coffee. This bear actually stalks him, sneaks up behind him, grabs him, yanks him back into the brush about 70 yards, proceeds to eat him. A neighbor actually witnesses, hears the screams, comes out, sees this bear eating his neighbor, runs back in, gets a gun, shoots the gun, scares the bear off. Okay. But this one is really, really out there because it's one of the first well it's one of the only documented cases i could find Mm -hmm. where a bear stalked a human a black bear literally stalks him sees him drags him into a thicket and then begins to eat him no dog no chance encounter it's really weird do we know how potentially how long this bear had been stalking this man too long if you asked him 
Right, but I didn't know if anybody had ever seen the bear hanging out around the area. Because like did he peeping, have food? Peeping Tom? I don't know. That was, okay, that's an like, interesting was point. Was garbage out? I read the case report on this. The wildlife guys were like, hey, he was doing everything right. There was no trash out. He wasn't storing food improperly. This appears to be a case where a bear literally stalked him as a source of food. Kind of weird. Wow. So, okay. moral of my story here is bears do pose a threat to humans. Now we have to be clear. There's different types of bears and that's sure. where we're going to head. So I have a map. one of the ways that we can try to help regulate this and maybe reduce that threat is mm -hmm. hunting. Obviously we, we have to be careful about overpopulating bears. Sure. Bears in cities are bad. What I did find is most of the states that have recorded fatal bear encounters allow hunting of bears. Hmm. Most of the states that don't allow hunting of bears don't have fatal encounters. Oh, that's an interesting statistic. So I am so far unable to find any direct correlation that allowing the hunting of bears reduces Jesus. the threat of fatal bear attacks on people. There's currently 34 states throughout the United States that actually allow the hunting of bears. I got a little diagram here. And we'll those are all highlighted in blue that allow yeah, it. Yeah, we'll throw this up on uh, YouTube. This is courtesy of the Humane Society, who okay. will play a major role in this case here in a little bit. Oh, good. So how do you hunt a bear? Uh, a gun? <laughs> I don't, I honestly don't know. There's I've archery season. looking for a bear. Okay, so there's a couple ways. You can just go out and find one, try to shoot it. Okay. You can use hounds. The use of what's called a houndsman. I, I am aware of people using hounds. You yes. can also bait a bear. And I'm aware of the practice of baiting bears. Okay, so let's talk about those a little bit. Baiting bears, not real popular. It's been slowly outlawed throughout the continental United States. There's actually only 10 states that allow baiting of bears. And what baiting of mm. bears is, is it's your changing the pattern of a bear where you're intentionally placing food in a location that's drawing bears in over time. Right. And then when it's hunting season, you just go set up at that location and wait for the bear to come eat dinner. It's such a cheat. It, it is kind of a cheat. The, the other problem is, is it really throws off the natural ecosystem of what's going on with that right. bear and the bear's ecosystem. Yeah. What do you bait bears with? Well, I know that bears have been baited with donuts. They love donuts. Donuts, pastries, and dog food. There is actually a website bearbaitingtips.com. I thought it was beer baiting when I first read mm -hmm. it, but it's bearbaitingtips.com. Uh -huh. They have a recipe for what's called bear crack. Well, it, hang on. We'll get back to bear crack, but I have seen a honey, like the honey thing oh, set up in different for locations. The, the for hives. Bees. Yeah, the hives. They love those. And they're big. And I remember in Northern Arizona, we were driving across a handful of hives that were set up in the summertime. And we went by one morning and they were just ripped to shreds yeah. and the bears, I'm sure had a field day with it overnight or bear or bear. Yeah. Bears yeah. like honey. Okay. So bear crack, if you ever want to bait a bear, I do not recommend this, but if you wanted to, you put syrup, marshmallows, a jello packet and sugar, you boil that and then you pour that concoction over mm. dog food Oof. and then you go dump the dog food. And bears love that. They call it bear crack. Oh, this is terrible. Yeah. So baiting bears is a thing. There are 19 states in the United States that allow you to use hounds or dogs okay. to hunt bear. This is slowly getting phased out as well. There Good. are, we're going to talk about a lot of animal cruelty stuff today. So this means that we're going to be penalized by YouTube today? Yeah, I doubt YouTube is going to monetize anything we say today. That's okay. It it's is. Fine. It's fine. It's a good it's story fine. to get out there. The, the problem with using dogs is it's one of those things, if you abuse it, you lose it. And there'll be a lot of people that say, no, there's nothing wrong with hunting with dogs. And to an extent, I agree with that. And we're going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. The problem is you have some idiots out there who abuse this. And sure. it As just leaves anything. a very bad flavor for everybody. Okay. When we start talking about the use of dogs hunting, humans have been using dogs. I went all the way back 9,000 years there's actual some history of dogs being incorporated into hunts. So it's nothing new. We've been doing this for a long story. Sure. For a long time. It's how they use them. Correct. We had a family ranch, so mm -hmm. to speak, back in the day. Uh, southeastern Arizona, we had a mountain lion problem. Yes. And the problem with mountain lions is when they start eating your baby calves, they realize that's really good meat and it's really yeah. easy to get. It's a cheat for them. 
as well is similar to what it could be for a hunter as easy it is for a hunter yeah and the problem is once mountain lions start eating your calves they won't stop we actually paid into a co-op where we had a full-time hunter who used dogs and if we ever came across a fresh kill where a mountain lion had recently killed one of our cows we could call this guy and he would bring his dogs out and they would track the mountain lion from the kill site back to the den or wherever the mountain lion was. And bear in mind, there's plenty of other food <laughs> out said there. Bear in mind. Bear in mind. Yeah, there's plenty of other food out there for the mountain lion to hunt. Yeah, you you have to protect your herd. If you, as a rancher, if you don't do this, you stop producing cattle and you stop stocking stores with beef. You can't go to in and out anymore if we well, don't control this. I think the other thing is that we have to make very clear there are a lot of people um, on the East Coast that don't realize full working cattle ranches do exist. Yeah, it's a real thing. Like people actually have full cattle ranches where cows just wander out in mm -hmm. giant fields. They eat, they have babies. We raise the babies and we eat them. Yeah, they're not trapped in pens all day Correct. long. Correct. And mountain lions will eat them so you have to protect them somewhat <laughs> so right wrong or indifferent it's a thing and that's i think the, the point i want to get across here is it's out there now the question is how do you train a dog to do this type of work i'm not sure actually and this I, is where I we know start there's a lot to get of baiting into... i i do know but i don't want to give it away so soon because it's yeah. it's a good story so there are businesses to be made by training dogs. I'm going to introduce you to one such person who does this. William Tyler Wood. He goes by Bo Wood because you don't train dogs. When when you're a dog trainer and people are yeah. like, hello, sir, what's your name? You don't be like, I'm William Wood. No, it doesn't work. You have to be like, Bo Wood. I'm Bo Wood. This is Bo Wood, his circle. His yeah, I've got a picture. This is actually out of uh, an old Facebook account of his, but he is circled in the red there. Two bears they just recently killed. And uh, he's got the caption, booking hounds for December in Virginia and West Virginia. We're going to talk about the significance of booking hounds in December in Virginia and West Virginia here in just a minute. Okay. So just remember that piece. But what he's advertising here is for either 150 bucks a week or 500 bucks a month. If you pay for the whole month, you get a hundred dollar discount. Uh -huh. All hounds must be up to date in vaccines and show no aggression to other dogs. What Bo is advertising here in December in Virginia and West Virginia, it gets cold. What do bears do when it gets cold? They hibernate. They hibernate. So if I have a bunch of dogs that I'm trying to train and keep trained up on how to run after chase and find bears. You're not doing it in Virginia. Nope, because it's hard to do in there. So okay. you get somebody like Bo Wood who says, hey, if you're in Virginia or West Virginia for that month, 500 bucks, that's per dog, by the way. Oh my gosh. So if you have 10 dogs you send him, it's 5,000. Wow. And how many dogs does a hunter like that typically keep? I will tell you that there's recommendations that if you're going to use dogs to hunt bears, they would like you to use at least six for the safety of the dogs. Because when a dog finds a bear, they do what's called baying. They mm -hmm. bay the bear. It's where they kind of circle it and they start barking. Now, most bears will run up the tree. So the dogs just circle around the bottom. But if there isn't a tree and the bear just kind of stops and goes on the fight, having six dogs that'll circle there's that bear. There's safety in numbers. Keeps them safe. If you're only using two or three, there's a good chance your dog might get a little swipe there right that's why Bo's business here is bade solid kennels okay uh, he's gonna bay the bear solid right babe bade as in b-a-y-e-d correct okay so Bo is a houndsman <laughs> means he trains dogs he uses dogs for hunting he also is a welder and fabricator jb welding and fabrication he's a jack of all trades if you want a dog kennel Bo's your boy okay he can build dog kennels like nobody's business great he lives in Lake Butler, Florida. It's okay. just north of Gainesville, about an hour south of Georgia. Okay. It's pinned between, and I'm going to screw this name up. Osceola? Yep, that's it. National Forest and the Ocala National Forest. Okay. So, Osceola? Osceola. That's what I said. Uh, just north of uh, Lake Butler, mm -hmm. and then Ocala just south. So, he's pinched in between these two big national forests. Okay. Do you know Florida has bears? Yes. Yeah, black, they have black bears. Black bear. Something unique about Florida bears, they are a subspecies of the American black bear, unique just to Florida. <laughs> so Florida has a unique subspecies of the black bear that is pretty much only found in Florida. A little bit of northern Georgia, but for the most part, just Florida. Well, it never really gets cold enough for them to hibernate there. No, they're a year-round bear. So Florida has a lot of cattle ranching. You know what else Florida has that I didn't know until I got involved in this case? Alligators. Bees. 
Oh, I can see There's a that. lot of honey that is made in Florida. And it's funny mm-hmm. you brought up your story of northern Arizona. Mm-hmm. What do you think the biggest threat to uh, the beehives in Florida are? The bears. Bears. So for a long time, Florida allowed the hunting of bears. And in 1974, the bear population got down around 400. Oh, dear. It was bad. They were about to kill off the bear. And because it's a unique subspecies, they were about to make the Florida black bear go extinct. Oh. Florida government moved in. They made it illegal to hunt bears. And they're trying to revitalize and bring back the Florida black bear. Okay. Today, 4,000 of those little guys running around. Oh, that's far less, though, than they have of alligators and pythons. Or great whites. And great whites. Contact is becoming very common in florida with black bears there's okay. the attacks are really rare like you've got it your dog has to be interacting somehow you stumbled across a mom with cubs sure. those type of things so when you say contact is becoming common people are seeing them on the side of the road they're knocking over garbage cans What's they're, they're eating our trash and you know what let's be honest animals eating trash it happens oh our dog gets into the garbage can just the other day we had a pack of javelina attack our dumpster yeah tipped it over uh, up the, the whole, whole neighborhood <laughs> they were just knocking everybody's garbage so cans that's over. kind of what they're experiencing in florida right now the bears are getting into garbage cans they're getting into houses they're just kind of a big pain they're like they're a, a giant nuisance. raccoon they're just a pain in the ass okay. right okay one thing i will tell you in all the research and i've talked to some people who would know there is not a single recorded death from a black bear in the state of florida i was unable and when you think of florida and arizona mm-hmm and bears you probably don't think much i found multiple bear deaths in arizona i cannot find a single death attributed to a bear attack and when you say people who would know you're talking about people within the profession of wildlife management correct i'm not talking about aj tony smith (laughs) who is aj tony smith there's a picture of i'm assuming who aj tony smith is here aj tony smith is the sheriff of franklin county let me frame uh, Franklin County here. Does he it's, actually talk like that? He's got to. Look at that picture. We don't know that. Hello, I'm AJ Tony Smith. I'm running for sheriff, Franklin County. I could see a narrative like that coming from bubbles in this picture. Yes. Uh, so Franklin County, it's 12,000 residents. It's a small county. Most okay. cities or towns are bigger than the entire county. Okay. The problem that Tony Smith, Sheriff Tony Smith, has brought up here is he noticed a disturbing trend in his jurisdiction the last couple of years. And what is this disturbing trend? Bear break-ins are on the rise. Bear break-ins breaking into garbage cans? Houses. Oh dear. Apparently the bears in Franklin County are breaking into houses and they will start eating everything in your house. Now, when you say they're breaking into houses, are they pawing at windows and crawling in through windows? If you leave your window open and there's a screen, they'll rip the screen right off and come in. If you leave your door unlocked, they will come in. I found one big dog door like the little doggy door uh, but the big ones yeah bear came right through there ate all the dog food got into the refrigerator oh my gosh the the one that really disturbed sheriff smith here was a lady called 911 a bear had broken into her house mm-hmm. and would not leave it camped out in the kitchen was eating everything in her kitchen she had to lock herself in the uh, the bedroom okay. and all of a sudden sheriff smith found himself with a hostage situation where the bear had taken over the house Okay, so people need to start bear-proofing their homes, it sounds like. Well, according to Sheriff Smith, (laughs) bear-proofing, handing out pamphlets, telling people to be bear-wise and put up your trash isn't working. There's a bear problem in Florida. He wants a bigger solution to a bear problem. Yeah, so there's some hubbub going on in Florida right now. Okay. You can't hunt bears in Florida because of the almost extinction. Now, they did try to hunt bears. They brought it back briefly in 2015 the Fish and Wildlife Commission said, hey, maybe we bring back bear hunting temporarily. So we're going to allow this four-day hunt. We're going to issue a maximum of 320 permits. And we think in four days, there'll be 320 bears. To manage the bear population? Yeah, because the bear population was starting to explode a little bit. Okay. After two days, the great citizens of Florida had already killed 300 of them. So they're like, all right, the hunt's over. (laughs) So they had to stop the hunt. There are discussions of bringing bear hunting back simply to help manage this bear population. But Sheriff Smith called a couple of his buddies, a couple of his buddies in the legislature started getting together, and all of a sudden, you get Florida House Bill 87. Which is? Imagine yourself living in Florida. Okay. You come home. Mm -hmm. You find a bear attacking me. Guess what? I can shoot it. You can shoot it. I don't need a law to do that. I don't need legislation for that. That's common sense. Welcome to Florida. 
You know what's also interesting in Florida? I found that they had almost five times the great white shark attacks uh -huh. over bear encounters. Yeah. Hey, Florida, why don't you manage all of your alligators that eat kids every day? <laughs> Disneyland, nonetheless. Yeah, Disneyland. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Yeah. So they just snatch them out of boats when they're out fishing. Yeah. So right now there's this big thing in Florida about regulating bears and you can kill a bear now if it's attacking you or it's attacking your house. If it's tearing up your house, you can shoot it and kill it too. Okay. A lot of issues over this. We won't get into the political side, okay. but what I want to make sure our listeners are tracking, Florida is a bear friendly state. There is no hunting of bears. You can't use dogs to track bears. You cannot bait bears. You can't do anything with the bears unless it's trying to kill you or your house. It's if you want to be a healthy bear, go to Florida. They can't mess with you there. Okay. We've made it very clear at this point. Florida is a bear safe community. Okay. Let's go back to Bo Wood. Bo loves killing bears. <laughs> oh, I don't know dear. how else to say it. And these are Bo's dogs? Yeah, the picture I have here, bears or Is that a little bear that he's holding, like a cub? Yeah, the picture I have here. By his ears? Bo is sitting on a bear, and he's lifting the head up by its ears. And mm -hmm. all of Bo's dogs are kind of circled around him. And Bo's got a big fat grin on his face. He's just really happy that he killed that bear. Oh, Bo loves killing bears. He loves his dogs. Those are the things Bo loves. Bo advertises. You saw the other. Here's another one of his advertisements with his phone number. He probably needs a uh, like a media person because it's really hard to read this. Year, year round hound training, $500 a month. And those of you that are listening, the picture shows four kind of like hound dog style dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're all barking at a bear. In the woods. In the woods. So let's think about this for a minute. To be able to train dogs to hunt bears, you need bears. Yes. You need bears year round if you're going to advertise year round hound training. This would be very good to do in Florida. Very good to do in Florida. What's the problem with Florida? They're a bear friendly state. They're a bear friendly state. Now, if you're wondering, well, I wonder if Bo Wood is a good trainer. All you got to do is look at his Facebook page. He's got some really good, just glowing reviews. In fact, this guy, JP Buxton. Mm hmm. Your dogs will see more bear in a month than most dogs see in a year. Proof's in the pudding. Well, he did spell it pudding, but I could hear pudding coming out of, his, out of his mouth. Okay, how do you see more bears in a month than most dogs see in a year? How do you do that? If this is true, let's just give JP, you know, the value of... Well, I guess I've there would have to be a lot of bears around. Hound dog bear hunting school. 500 bucks per month per dog. Bo will take your dog to prime bear country and will teach him how to bay a bear. Bait solid kennels. One small problem with the business plan. The only place that you're going to have access to bears year round in the way that Bo wants to do it is Florida. Florida. Because they don't hibernate. Now, really quick, explain to me what baying actually is. You, it's you that kind barking, of got into it. that barking noise. So... I had to do a lot of research. It was disturbing for this. In fact, we had to cut a lot of this out because I know YouTube won't post it. So when hound dogs are trained to chase a bear, the way that they bark, the pitch levels, I think it is, in okay. their bark alerts okay. other dogs to what's going on. So when you just hear a bunch of damn dogs barking, you're not hearing what's going on. When a hound dog, a properly trained hound dog is actually on the trail of a bear, they start to bay in a certain tone that lets the other hound dogs know I've got the scent. It's a communication for the dogs. Correct. And then they will start to chase this bear. And when they get the bear to run up a tree, they all circle the tree and they start baying, barking loudly. Mm -hmm. So when they talk about baying a bear, a hunter who trains with dogs a lot will hear that and be like, they got a bear bayed. Oh, and that's okay. How they know. Now there's a cheat that's happening throughout the United States right now. That's a big time cheat. Mm -hmm. They'll put GPS trackers on all these dogs. And now these hunters will just let 20 dogs go and then they'll sit their fat asses in a truck watching a map uh -huh. and just wait for the dogs to stop because they know when the dogs stopped, they've got a babe and I'm a, assuming they've got a bear bayed. And I'm assuming they're using bear crack to get the bears to one location where the dogs go and bay the bear into a tree. Exactly. Cause it's hard just to drive around and find a bear. But if you bait bears on a regular basis, you know where they're going to be. You just go there and let your dogs go. It's hard to actually be a hunter. And this way it is. So Especially how you, when hunting is illegal. How do you train a dog to hunt a bear? Um, well, bear crack, 
for one. Let's um, get into the animal cruelty piece that just sets people off. So you start okay. with small animals, and I've got a little video here. I think oh, we're going to get away, and, and I'm going to do a little warning here for those of you who are very sensitive about animal cruelty. Mm -hmm. You may want to listen to this one on Spotify or Apple. Don't watch the YouTube well, one. Well, and hey, YouTube review people, we're not doing this to be malicious. This is a very real thing that happens. It's educational. It is educational. So you start with small animals, and a lot of these guys will use live traps out in the woods, and they'll trap like possums or raccoons, and mm -hmm. then they'll bring those possums and raccoons home. And what they'll do is they'll release the little raccoon or the possum. I've got a video of a possum here. And then you can tell these are younger dogs. Yeah. They release the dogs. And the idea is they're teaching the dogs how to like circle it, keep it busy, try to pin it in one area, see how they're barking at mm -hmm. the dog. Um, knowing my wife the way that I do, I want you to take a look when this video plays. Let's play through one more time here. Okay. When the camera pans up, if this was our backyard... Uh, what, what do you think would, would happen at our house? I don't know. I'm waiting for the camera to pan up. Oh, dear. That's... <laughs> mm, Are you saying my hobby's not going to be uh, hound dogs anytime soon? No, no. We're not keeping a bunch of pets in large cages in our backyard. So you start with these little possums. Okay, the next one's going to get worse, so prepare yourself. Mm, okay. Then you go to bigger animals. Now, I am not in any way advocating that we don't manage wild pig populations because it is becoming a real problem in the United States. And yeah. I've done enough research on this to tell you wild boars and wild pigs in the United States is a big issue right now. They need to be eradicated. How you do that isn't my eradicated own. or population managed eradicated. They're not naturally wild. These are people who have let pigs go out in the wild. And now we have these crazy wild pigs running over. But the problem is they completely tear up farmland, livestock land, it impacts the bottom dollar. When you go to the store and you're bitching about prices at the store, mm -hmm. you have to understand issues like this are contributing to that. Oh, okay. So wild pigs are an issue. Acknowledging wild pigs are an issue, I do not condone. This is what we do with pigs. Okay. So what you're about to see here in this video, these guys will go out and they will capture wild pigs. So they'll make these little corrals, if you will, mm -hmm. put bait or food in there to bring the pigs in. And then once the pigs go in, they'll shut the door and they trap these pigs. And then they're training the dogs using a little bit of a bigger animal. Yes. They'll bring them back to their house. In this case, they will stake the pig out. So they'll tie like a rope or something to the pig's back leg. Mm -hmm. And what they'll do is they'll put a stake in the ground and the pig can't run away and they'll release the dog. And they're teaching the dog to basically attack and kill this pig. It's an animal that's bigger than the dog and an animal that will try to fight back. Yeah, but it's most dogs can bite and chew on pigs okay you know if they have really bad teeth they will like cut the teeth out first too which makes it pretty bad mm -hmm. but tying a pig up and allowing a dog just to attack it i think the majority of people are going to start to get annoyed and irritated yeah by that's this. not okay so Again, that's it's part of cheating at the hunt right yeah so now i've got my dog going after pigs so now i need them to go after bears and the way that i do this is just like you explained earlier, I can bait the bear, have them hang out until we find a bear, mm -hmm. and then release my dogs and have them go after the bear. Now, the more aggressive your dog is to go after the bear, mm -hmm. it's considered that you have a better bear dog. And where did this video come from of these dogs? Oh. Is this from just oh. the internet? Yeah, we'll talk about this. It's, it's okay. Instagram accounts. All this is off of an Instagram account. And is this still part of the training process? Yes. Here? And now you want reps. So now that you have your dog chasing bears, it's all about reps. You want that dog to get really good at finding, sniffing out, chasing bears. But mm -hmm. you also want a very aggressive. A very aggressive bear dog is considered a good dog. Okay. So people like Bo will go to a lot of work to train these dogs. And okay. they'll go out and they'll start baiting these bears. They even post pictures of trailers like this one here. Okay. That's all bear food or what those are just big barrels though. Like of 55 food. gallon drums of food. Yeah. What and is, is that bear crack in those? Do we, we don't know what's in those barrels. Do we, we're going to get there. We figure it out through this investigation or they figure it out, it, but we're going to get to that. It kind of looks like a greasy pizza box. Yeah. Kind of. Huh? Yeah. <sighs> okay. So let's talk about this actual case. Now that everybody understands the issues, and what's legal, illegal, and some of the animal cruelty that goes on, let's actually talk about what's happening. Okay. Bo's got a business of training dogs. 
Bo's got a whole small army working for him to help him train these dogs to hunt bears. They do mm-hmm. it year round in Florida. Okay. They really specialize in these states that have winter months to bring your dogs down to Florida during the winter months, train them. And then when it's bear season, you take your dog back and you have these crackerjack dogs that can just find bears anywhere. Sure. Well, you got to promote that business. So they use Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. And those clips that you just saw are all posted on this group's Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat. Just all their social. Yes. They're trying to advertise their business. Okay. Now, the idea here is you chase every day. Let's go out and chase a bear with these dogs. We'll train Mm -hmm. them. Eventually, the dogs will start to tree the bears. These idiots felt like if the dogs could attack the bear, because when they attack the possum, they liked it. When they attack the pigs, they get more and more aggressive. It's just like training a fighting dog. Mm -hmm. If they could attack the bears, they'll get more and more aggressive. So these guys take it to the next level. And I took all these videos out because we're not going to put them out there. They would tree these bears when you say tree the bear people need to understand that that means the bear gets scared and runs up the tree and stays in the, the tree dogs for as will long chase as the bear until literally the bear is out of energy and then it runs up a tree because it doesn't know what else to do the problem is they're super tired now and they'll typically fall out of the tree or just jump out of the tree or jump out of the tree because they don't know what to do and they would allow the dogs at that point to just maul and kill the bear it is very 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 sad yeah, we'll get into how you know this mm-hmm. so Fast forward, all this is happening. You and I are at a conference. Mm-hmm. We're trying to sell some cell phone tracking software we have. Yeah. It's a law enforcement only conference <laughs> and I'm gone. I'm busy doing something. If I remember right, a Mr. Todd Hoyle comes up and talks to you. Yes, he is one of the kindest and gentlest law enforcement community members I think that we've worked with. And I really, really enjoy when we get a chance to do Um, work with him or conferences he's a great great person he does work for florida fish and wildlife and he was at a conference and he ran across our booth and we're in massachusetts actually and he started asking what we could do with cell phone technology so i started explaining to him what it is we do and he started explaining this case that he had with these bears and he said here let me let me show you a video I'm like, okay, well, I, I was expecting maybe a, a bloody crime scene, a few dead kids, some parents, something. But not that any of that isn't bad, but he pulls up this video, this black and white video of these dogs barking at this bear. And this bear is running up the tree, but then I see its cubs in the tree. And... It was a long time the video went. He actually fast forwarded it through the video. And suddenly I see the mom bear, like her claws sliding down the tree because she's getting tired. But she has her cubs on limbs and all of her cubs are just hanging on the limbs, watching her slide down the tree. And she finally just gets so tired that you see her body go limp at the base of the tree and all the dogs just maul her it was the one of the worst things i have ever seen and i was just like how many crime scene photos do you think you've seen oh my gosh i've seen so many have you ever cried at a human crime scene no i came back to the booth and you were bawling i wasn't bawling but i was tearing you had tears rolling down your face i and i was like we're just gonna work this case for free doing this we're putting these people in jail these so much horrible. for the business yeah, plan yeah. and i'm gonna put their dogs in jail and yes it was it was terrible yeah but there went our business plan um more work without pay right so that's okay though but it was definitely worth having an understanding of how brutal and cruel the training of dogs to hunt bears is yeah and it wasn't bear season and i think the other thing for people to understand because uh, we did the poached elk aside and i got a lot of comments of us being really critical to people who are just trying to feed their family through hunting mm-hmm. i don't want to see any of that bullshit this go around these are not people trying to feed their family they are killing bears for the sheer sport of training dogs to hunt bears mm-hmm. a lot of times they would just leave the bear uh, they did find bear carcasses out there This is not a hunting thing. It's just waste. And the overwhelming majority of the legitimate hunting community would condemn this in a heartbeat. So 
I Let's agree. make that really clear. This isn't a hunting thing. Well, I think not to get off topic too much here, but there is a larger piece of people hunting bears for other illegal practices to send bear gallbladders to Russia and other parts of the Eastern world, right? Yeah. And bear gallbladders taken illegally is a big trade right now. Sometimes thirty to fifty thousand dollars per kilogram of and, bear gallbladder and bile. bear paw. Like and bear paws. paws is a thing. Yeah, it's like collecting shark fins. Right. Bear paws are a big thing. So I'm not gonna get into some of the details because I don't want to reveal some of the stuff that Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission did during this investigation. It's investigative tactics. I don't want to educate these idiots mm -hmm. to get away with this in the future. Yeah. So what I will do is we talked to him. You saw the video. You told me whatever these people need, they're getting from us. So yes. we're, we're, we're somewhat helping from a distance on this case. And what I can say is these idiots were posting enough stuff on social media trying to advertise what they were doing that it was very easy to identify their phones, get their phone records, start looking at their phone records. You could get the patterns of life. We could see them going out into the national forest at certain times. Mm -hmm. You could see them going around at night and we'll get into that. There was some yeah. really weird activity in the evenings. Those progressed to GPS trackers. So now we're getting very precise GPS of what they're doing. And those trackers went to surveillance. But when I say they, I'm talking the investigation in general, not necessarily us. But we got a small piece of the pie being able to help with and putting some of this together and being able to track yeah. where these people are going. It's a major operation. They do this over a couple months, almost a year. And there's movements throughout the entire United States. So that's the first big thing that's going to come up here. This is not unique to Florida. Mm -hmm. They were advertising through the entire United States, bring your dogs from around the U.S. to Florida. And you'll see how many dogs we're going to get here in just a okay. little bit. They were really targeting Minnesota, Michigan, and Wisconsin because during the winter months up there, you can't do anything with your dogs. It makes sense to send your dogs to a warmer climate where they can train all, all right. year round in the off uh -huh. season, right? Yeah. When we started looking at patterns of life, they were regularly entering these national forests. So we can start to identify like, okay, here's where this activity is going. Sure. Once we get to the trackers, we can see exactly where in the national forest they're going. But there was these weird nighttime runs to different towns. Like they'd go to Jacksonville, just some random night, just around Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. So Fish and Wildlife sets up some surveillance operations. Okay. Apparently Krispy Kreme. At night, oh. when they're cleaning out the day's donuts, mm -hmm. they bag up all the old donuts, throw them in the trash can. These guys were driving that big trailer you saw with those big 55 they're gallon They're dumpster drums. diving at Krispy Kreme. They're, they're hitting all the Krispy Kremes in like a 120 mile radius, and they're emptying the dumpsters full of these donuts, and that's what they're feeding these bears. That's out. why the, the big barrels looked greasy. Yes, they're full of donuts. Uh -huh. And then they would take these donuts out into the National Forest and dump these giant bar barrels of them. The bears will come eat the donuts, and once they get this on a regular basis, the bears are coming back. All they have to do is take dogs to that area and let them go. They're going to be bears in the area. And they'll come back to the same place every time yeah, for the donuts. Exactly. <sighs> now that they're starting to figure this out, now they can actually get surveillance video going, and they're putting some undercover cameras around these bait sites. Mm -hmm. And they're actually going to get these guys coming out with the dogs and actually doing these hunts, if you will, with okay. the dogs. And it blows the whole case wide open. Right. So this puts the case together. They're going to end up with nine suspects. I want to talk a little bit about the suspects. Looks like he may be eating the donuts as well. <laughs> William Tyler Bo Woods. Okay. This is his booking picture from Marion County Jail. Uh, we've been talking about Bo for quite a while now. Could you imagine getting booked to go to jail for this? Because understand, technically under the law, it's bear molest. Mm-hmm. Like you just got booked. You're sitting next to a sexual assault suspect, From molesting a bear, a, a bank robber, and a, yeah. a a murder suspect. And they're like, "What are you in for, Bo? Uh, molesting a bear?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be. He looks bad. like the guy that would molest a bear, though. Uh, he gets yeah. charged with Rico, and why this is this is a business. Yeah. And why this is such a big deal is they're making a business. They're actually profiting from this illegal activity. So yeah. it's just like drug dealing. Mm -hmm. It is a Rico case for them okay um, so wildlife like pretty much took all of their assets seized everything trucks houses money accounts donuts donuts everything. Dogs. dogs did that include the dogs we'll get to wait that. but the dogs don't belong to them we're gonna get to that oh okay. so rico fighting animals littering to you unlawful use of a two-way radio 
when they're communicating on tracking these bears and chasing these bears down, you can't use radios to track bears. It's illegal to hunt them in the first place. Uh -huh. And then unlawful taking of bears. When they get into the social media and the phone of these guys, they actually find pictures of dead bears all over. Like I they've got it. pictures of these guys skinning bears. They've got mm -hmm. pictures of them, just these bear carcasses. Well, it's a trophy for them. They want to show off their prizes, exactly. their wins. Yes. They're, they're very, very, what's the word, braggadocious yes. with what they're doing. Now, I've worked a lot of wild, I've worked quite a few wildlife cases. I've seen a lot of wildlife cases. Typically, probation. You get your hunting status. Maybe they see some stuff. Mm-hmm. To make it really clear, I've never seen a wildlife case where somebody gets legitimate jail time. Bo's going to get a full year. He's got to go to jail for a year because of this. Wow. He's going to get 10 years of probation. And what I can tell you is typically people like this, they don't change. Yeah. It's in his blood. 10 years probation. He will screw that up. Yeah, he'll, he'll do it again. Just a matter of time. So you said he had a whole operation, though. I'm assuming he's one of the leaders of this operation. He is kind of the ringleader. Uh, they're also going to hit him with a fine, $37,000 fine. And they seize 14 of his dogs. Oh, my gosh. We'll talk about the dogs here in a little bit. Okay. That's they also, on his phone, they find some other pictures that he posted and some hunts that he's been involved with. Mm -hmm. He took his dogs to Utah for a bear hunt in Utah, to which they just chased a bear down and ran it till it couldn't run anymore. Then they put it in a cage, took it back to camp, and then the next day they let it out of the kennel. So it could, the dogs could run it down again until it got tired and just passed out. Everybody's pretty sure they end up killing this bear, but they couldn't prove it. Uh, but he does get charged in Utah for this as well. So mm -hmm. he's not just doing it in Florida. He's doing it across the United States. Oh my gosh. And he's just training these other dogs in Utah, but because these Utah people can't get their dogs out to Florida, he's traveling to them. I'm wondering if he, they had him in Florida for a while and then he brought him back and kind of showed him what was up in Utah. Had to get him acclimated to the Utah yeah. Bears. Yeah. Our second suspect, William Willie Bob <laughs> Edward Landrum. You Willie know you're Bob. dealing with some people when uh, Willie Bob is who you are known by. He's Yeah, I and know you report to Bo. Yeah, Willie Bob reports to Bo Wood. Okay. Uh, this is going to sound crazy. Willie Bob's from Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> so Willie Bob's role in this is Virginia and West Virginia are big bear hunting states. Okay. But they have hibernating bears. So sure. Willie Bob would coordinate from West Virginia and Virginia during those winter months to bring the dogs down to Bo. Okay. And that was his role. He got five years probation, $15,000 fine. Okay. Then we get some couples. Love is in the air. Mm -hmm. Charles Luther and Hannah Weiner Scarborough. Hannah Weiner. Oh, yeah. this poor girl. Those glasses okay. are not helping her. Well, neither does the orange jumpsuit, but... <laughs> Right. So they both get wrapped up in this. They were just helping overall. They would help bait the bears. They would help kind of coordinate things, taking the dogs out. Luther is actually going to turn some state's evidence and he's going to testify against the others and help them with some other cases they're working. Oh. I don't know exactly whatever panned out with him on actual fines and other things because he became a state witness. Hannah mm -hmm. just took the five-year probation deal, which is a pretty sweet deal. Mm -hmm. 26000 in fines though. No wow. joke there for the fines. She'll be working for a long time to pay those fines. Yeah. Then we have Dusty and Haley Reddish. Now, I'm going to give Dusty and Haley some shit, and then I'm going to defend them a little bit. Okay. Uh, Dusty was kind of Bo's right-hand man. Dusty was coordinating a lot of this. Okay. Most of the social media posts were coming from Dusty and Haley. They hmm. got married. They were really into using dogs for pigs. Some of those videos we saw earlier are Dusty and Haley's videos. Then okay. they kind of graduated from the pigs onto the bears. Dusty was a mess at the time, and he really thought that this was okay to do. His yeah. barometer on what is acceptable and not was really screwed up. It's a very normal lifestyle for them. Yes, they thought this was perfectly normal. He actually tells Fish and Wildlife when they arrest him, I didn't realize how serious this was. I always thought it was wrong and I might get a ticket if I did it, but I didn't realize it was illegal, illegal. Interesting. Yeah. Considering he's going to go to jail for 180 days, uh, oh. five years probation, also $37,000 in fines. Oh. Haley has some information that can help them though. So she's going to testify against some others as well. She gets a pretty sweet deal. Just some probation. Huh. Okay. You know, the one thing I would say to Dusty and Haley, if they ever hear this, go clean up your Instagram. A lot of the shit is still on Dusty's Instagram page. 
Mm-hmm. Might be time to revive that. You don't want this look following you around the rest of your life. You look like a terrible individual on your Instagram. And so do you, Haley, because they do it as gotta love them. They're a couple and they're doing it together. Mm-hmm. But you look at their Instagram, they got some really screwed up shit there. Oh, dear. Yeah, so Dustin and Haley. Okay. Oh, who is this gentleman? <laughs> How would you describe that picture? Um, I don't know for sure. I. I'd rather not describe it. Christopher we'll Elliott Hahn. Uh, he has a prior in 2014 exact same offense using dogs to hunt bears in Florida. He got eight years probation. He looks like he's been eating a lot of the bear bait. Yeah. He likes the bear crap. Yeah. He's got something going on there. Yeah. Mark Christopher Lindsay, 270 days in jail. I can't find a whole lot on him photo wise, but you'll notice his jail time is a little higher than the others. Eight. He years also got probation. eight years probation. I think this mainly stems. There's a video of him. There's a bear that goes to the top of this tree, and there's this video of him climbing the tree to knock the bear out so <gasps> that the dogs can maul it. And they actually videotape it. You can hear people laughing in the background the whole time, but he climbs up the tree and is like shaking the tree and knocking on it with a piece of wood to knock the bear out so the dogs can attack it. What an asshole. Yeah, it was disturbing video, and I'm pretty sure that's why he got the additional. Oh my gosh. So, and then we'll end up with Troy Travis Starling. This is actually Dusty's stepfather. It's kind of all in the family type thing. Yes. He was helping on the side, not super involved, but he was helping. Four years probation, $27,000 in fines. Wow. So that's the bear case. It was terrible to see the videos. And I think your video of the mother bear coming down, you did a really good job describing that. Mm -hmm. But we got into this and we show some pretty screwed up stuff sometimes on this podcast. I couldn't put the bear stuff on there. It's just, it is, it's terrible to watch. And I know a lot of people do, a lot of people think that we're, we're far more lenient towards animals or a little bit more empathetic towards animals than we are people. I think we get really, really used to seeing this happen to people and where we've been, but the bear stuff that we did watch, it is, terribly horrible to watch yeah but you know to your point if i was to swap out what we just watched with some of the animals with people i would be just as horrified could you I would imagine be just as horrified could you imagine somebody staking out a little kid in their yard to a chain and then releasing the dogs to chase down and bite the kid like it's no, just as horrible no. oh, God. <laughs> that's what i'm saying I, i'll bet I, there are people that do something like that though it would or, not surprise or chasing me. somebody up a tree and then knocking them out of a tree so dogs can maul them like that's stuff you see on horror movies well it's stuff you see coming is, out of other terrible countries yeah, that just, do bad things to their citizens right it's just terrible like, stuff so anyway that's the bears case i would really really strongly recommend to people who may still be engaging this don't you will get caught Mm -hmm. Uh, Pam Bondi was the AG in Florida at the time of this. She was pissed off about this. She insisted that they seize all of the dogs. I was, well, that's what I was wondering earlier. What happened to the dogs that they seized? Three of them. They ended up seizing 53 dogs. And I'm not saying all of them were there to be trained, but let's say even half of them were there to be trained. 500 bucks a pop. This was a real business. Mm -hmm. Like they were making money. Yeah. But also, by the time you invest all that time and effort, you buy the dog and you invest all the time to training, these dogs are really expensive. Right. So when And they could be aggressive. Extremely aggressive. So as this case went down, Pam Bondi's like, no, we're seizing the dogs. And the Fish and Wildlife crew were like, who's going to feed them? Where are we going to house them? What if we can't do anything or place them and at some point we have to euthanize them? Can you imagine what the public outcry is going to be? Like, we probably shouldn't do this. And Pam's like, these fools will never have these dogs again, whatever it takes. Well, Pam mm-hmm. has some connections with the Humane Society. Okay. Makes a couple phone calls to the Humane Society. This is actually pretty cool. They put okay. these 53 dogs in what I'm going to call the Witness Puppy Protection Program. <laughs> they redistribute these 53 dogs throughout the United States to different shelters okay. across the entire United States. No tracking, this no is, knowing where any of them went. This is awesome. So these clowns and their friends will never be able to find where these dogs ended up. Mm-hmm. And then they basically rehoused, if you will, all these yeah. dogs with new pet owners who are taking care of the dogs. Okay. And the original owners never get their dog never back their because dog. they're a part of the syndicate, te- technically. Yeah. I think the second part of what Pam was trying to do here was send a message. If you're in Wisconsin, Michigan, anywhere in West Virginia or Virginia, and you're sending your dogs to Florida to train, you know that shit's illegal. 
Mm-hmm. And if we catch you, we're taking your dog. Yeah. That you should lose that. You shouldn't be supporting this criminal syndicate by sending your dogs down there because by paying these people to do it, you're creating a demand that they're just going to keep doing it over and over. And mm-hmm. even if we bust them this week, somebody else is doing it next week because now we've actually established this as a legitimate profession, if you will. Right. So I think she did a really good job sending that message. Good. Very good. Good. And what about this bill that's being passed? When does that go into? It's pretty much all but passed. It's gone through the house as far as I can read. It's it's going to pass. It doesn't change anything. I don't think it's a big deal. It's just a lot of hubbub that doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. There are way more great white shark attacks than yeah. bear attacks. And quite honestly, you can't go out and kill great whites either. No. But I don't see any bills coming through saying if a great white is attacking it, you can fight back and kill it. Well, I don't foresee somebody fighting back and killing a great white unless you harpoon it from a boat somewhere. Maybe. But anyway, yeah, it's an interesting, interesting house bill. I think maybe Florida politics is just something we should steer clear of. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> let's do that. We don't live there anyway. Yeah. Leave it to Floridians. So next week. Join us next week, socialites, for the love of aliens. I forgot about that one. Have a great week. And we're following some breaking news right now. Former Higley Unified School District Superintendent Denise Birdwell has been indicted on 18 felony counts. They want the school board superintendent out. This morning, we're learning more about the issues facing this very large school district. This was one of the fastest growing school districts in the country at the time. I call the superintendent. She's explaining that the Higley High School was going through an audit. A very disturbing thing came out of this audit that she needs to bring to law enforcement's attention. They're not exactly sure just how far it goes yet, but it is definitely criminal in nature. We think there's potential potentially over a million dollars worth of damage. I'm absolutely blown away by all of this. This is deeper and more nefarious than I could ever think it would be.